Let me take you home. No. <laughs> so mad. Hey, this Pasito. Nice looking leg you got there. Showing it off like it is the sexiest thing on you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the disturbance. This video will be about Felix, the chameleon over there. Now we are there in that enclosure. That is Felix's enclosure. And you can, if I zoom it, you can see him there, standing on his branch, all tall and proud. But look what happens when I approach him. I'm slowly approaching, and I will slowly zoom out. Uh, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, I have been spotted. No, better hide. And you see, this is what he does all the time. He just hides behind the branch when I approach it. And now, you see, as I'm, as I'm moving away, he's just observing the situation with his, with his one eye. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious, but it is annoying. That is basically how it's having a chameleon, at least for me. I don't know if all the babies are like that, although he's not a baby, he is now like seven, eight, nine months old. Hmm. I need to check that, but I think that does no longer classifies him as a baby, but I'm not sure about that. But the reason why I never made a proper update on him ever since I got him, it is because he's being like that and he is not really enjoying my company. So therefore I was thinking that with time that will change and then I will make an update. But no, no, Felix is, Felix is not like that. He still hates me so much. But when he is on this branch, I can get him outside. It just takes a little bit of fiddling around, so let me do that right now. I just approach him with my, with my hand, like that, underneath, and, he's, and you see, he just puffs up because he is a, a mean, mean and dangerous, a dangerous chameleon. And then slowly I just, I just poke him and move him around until he switches to my hand. Slowly but surely. Slowly and surely, you see, I'm not lifting him hard and he basically moves on my hand on his own. Still tries to get away, but at least he's out now. Now, how can I get him to settle? Oh no, I need two hands. Hey, Felix. Oh, look how dangerous he is, look. A bit more light here. You see how dangerous he is? Ah, he's not. He just bluffs a lot. <laughs> and sometimes he hisses at me when, when he approaches my head, like... <laughs> okay, he's not doing it now, but come on. Chill, 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 chill. Chill, chill, chill. I cannot grab the other camera because he's moving constantly. Can you come down, please? No, no. Ah. Okay. What is happening? What is happening? I cannot see. Hey Felix, please cooperate a bit. I need just a tiny bit of cooperation. But you see his color. If you remember how he looked when, when I got him. His color was so much duller than now. And now look how many red color there is on him. So many red color and all the greens are much much brighter and much more saturated. He's gorgeous. He's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful chameleon. I really didn't thought that he will look this nice. And probably, and probably with time he will be even prettier. No, no, no. Oh, he's so fast. There is no stopping him, like at all. <laughs> Felix, I know you're not a fan, but please, for the, for the video. Be chilled. Let's see his floor walking abilities. Uh, if he goes on the floor... Come on, Felix, help me out. <laughs> oh, such a grumpy looking guy. Felix, wanna go down? Oh, you see? I mean, did you hear that? That was the voice of unhappy chameleon. I have no idea if this footage is in focus and in frame. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to grab that branch, look. Okay, come on, grab it. <laughs> no, you will break my plant. Felix, you are breaking my plant. <laughs> but he's so smart, you see, he is, he is fixed with his tail and his legs. He's always super stable. 
No. No. Felix. Felix. Come on, Felix. Felix. Felix, come here. <laughs> on the floor. Go on the floor. <laughs> I don't know how he can walk on the floor though. He looks kinda confused. Hey Felix, can you walk on the floor? Hmm? And look. And look at his tail. It's so cute. Oh, oh, so mad. I know it is just a bluff. Come on. Come on, Felix. <laughs> Let me take you home. No. <laughs> So mad! So much anger in that little guy. Brr brr brr. He's really getting pissed. <laughs> hey, so okay now you're okay now you are on the camera. Ah oh, this guy. Oh. There you go. Now what you gonna do? He's evaluating the situation, looking for a good escape route. Oh <laughs> what was that? <laughs> was that a blink? Where are you going, Felix? Oh, running away, running away, running away and hiding. I have one rule. When he goes there, I no longer touch him. This here branch behind, that is his safe spot. And when he gets there, I no longer disturb him. I just leave him alone because I want him to feel completely secure there. And I think that he is going there now. Too much disturbance for one day, huh, Felix? Yeah, yeah, just go, just go. I won't stop you. Man, but he's so pretty. Such a beautiful animal. With all those stripes and colors. Awesome tail, awesome legs, awesome hands, awesome eyes. Everything is awesome when it comes to this, this chameleon. Or chameleons in general, even though panther chameleons, like, like he is, they have the best color by far. Males, of course. Females are not that good looking. But yes, let me now update you on the actual cage, actual enclosure. As you see, the plants that are on top, they are fine. All the leaves are fine, they have color and everything. But as you go down, where there is less light, this plant is struggling to survive. All the leaves and branches on this part, this was all full, now it's empty, everything has fallen off. This is barely holding, but all the rest dropped. This one is in really bad shape, so Obviously, there is not enough light down there for, for plants to thrive. Which is technically alright, because the top part is completely fine. And Felix is exclusively, almost exclusively using this part for hide and just move around. But it would be much nicer if also this part is filled with plants. So, so that is the reason why I have this LED, LED light just hanging there. To provide some additional light for this plant and also the bottom part of that plant. I'm testing it out. I'm thinking of attaching it to this side, but I will see if it will make any change. As you see, I planted these plants here and this, and they are kind of holding, but not really that, that good. I think this was original inside when I added all the other plants, but this part is new and also this plant is new. This bromeliad is holding all right, but the other one, the one down here, it is not really doing that well. So again, hopefully this light will help with that. Other than that, the plant situation is looking really nice. The temperature on the hotspot is constant. The UVB is working as it should. And as you know, this is the best UVB light on the market. And also this heater, they are both made by Arcadia Reptiles. The best stuff you can get for your enclosure. For your animals and the misting system, if you remember, it is the Miss King system that is pumping the water that is stored here. And it is set on timer to mist three times a day, but I can also turn it on manually if it's needed. And you see now Felix is hiding on his favorite hiding spot. He can still see me, but feels much more secure than on the main branch. As I said, once he is over there, I no longer touch him. And also one thing that I'm really disappointed, the feeding. If you watch the original video when I put him inside of this enclosure, I tried to feed him then and I knew that he is really, really hungry because he was on a trip and everything. And he tried to eat, but he missed the roach. He missed it with his tongue and he just didn't want to try it anymore. So that day he also didn't eat. And over the course of next 
like two weeks. I was trying to hand feed him, but he was really, he got spooked really easily. And as soon as he got spooked, he would refuse to eat. And on the other time, he would often miss the roach with his tongue. Later on, I read that some chameleons can have problem with tongue injection, which can potentially be caused by improper diet. And since he was already really thin and he wasn't really eating as much as he should, I decided to try out and putting the roaches inside of this, inside of this ceramic bowl that I received from, from a subscriber. And you see there are roaches inside. They removed all the dust from them because they are standing for for a while now. I put roaches there to see if he will on its own calm down and eat them and thankfully he did just that. I could spot him all the time going down there and actually eating and catching the roaches and munching. I have some of the footage that I can show. So I was relieved that he's actually eating but that lead us to another problem. Now since he is not hungry, he always got roaches down there and he knows that. He never tries to catch food when I offer it with, with tweezers. He just backs away. Which is so annoying but I prefer it more than not eating at all and dying eventually. So that is also the reason why I don't have a, a feeding video with him because he doesn't want to eat on camera like that. He just goes down and eats whenever he wants. So that's a bummer because I was hoping that we will get cool slow motion videos with him catching roaches with his tongue and everything but mm -mm, we aren't that lucky unfortunately. And like 90% of the time he is either here basking or over there hiding when he had enough UVB exposure. 90% of the time when I check he is either here or there. The other 10% he is eating or just going somewhere other some other places. So one day I came here early and set up this camera and put it on time lapse to see if he actually moves around the enclosure. And to my surprise he is actually really really active, especially in the morning when I'm actually not here. That's why I couldn't spot him scouting the enclosure because once I get here he is usually just fixed in some of those two places. But the time lapse showed me just how much he is moving and how often he is going down there to check out on the roaches and get and eat some. He's an active little fella, but unfortunately not that interactive with me as, as we wanted, as we expected. And regarding the actual enclosure, how it's holding, we have one problem. If you watch the video, this is a particle board, just wood, wooden board. But I insulated all the edges with a line of silicone. That way the water cannot penetrate inside and destroy the wood. But one thing happened. And the problem is down here. You see the water managed to get inside of the board because the board actually split and it's full of moisture. But the water didn't penetrate from the edges. It actually penetrated on the middle of this board. Here on the middle I drilled one hole and that hole, you see this hole, it is so excess moisture can drain down when that is needed. And I wanted to put like a, a rubber ring inside so moisture cannot enter the wood but I decided to just put a lot of silicone inside and just smear it all around hoping that I will cover all the entrances. But Apparently I didn't do that as good as I thought and the water actually penetrated through that hole and just entered inside of the wooden board and everything split. Not a terrible thing but definitely inconvenient because also this is now raised up as you see. I can almost put the pinky under the glass and sometimes I have some leakage here. But I can live with that, it's not a big issue. That would be all the updates regarding Felix and his enclosure and now let me update you on some other stuff. Remember these enclosures that I recently made? You see now each of them got its own lid and I actually made it a bit wider so I can I can grab it easily. You see now it opens with an ease and it sits right in with ease. But if you look at the tarantula they didn't do anything special to their enclosure. Both gramostolas didn't even dig or anything. This one is hiding inside and did a bit of digging but nothing special and this one didn't even touch the, the hide. It is just standing outside. So these gramostolas are not really using their hide as much as they should. But this Nandu Chromatus, she was actually really busy. You see, she dug inside and the hole goes all the way to the glass. You see, this is my hand covering the, the light entering the hide. And she's down there even though the camera cannot pick it up. Now the enclosures are much more practical and actually usable. Unlike when they were stacked on top of each other. And also one more update. Check out what Tarantulas did to these enclosures. Siriopagopus hati hati female. She did a lot of digging. If you remember, you see how much digging she did. She made she made the huge hole behind the cork bark and actually dig under everything. And she did mess up this plant a bit, destroyed this leaf, but nothing major for now. And Tapinauhenius violatius female, you see she made the dirt curtain, but I need more light. Now you can see it better. You see? She closed it off, just as I said. Sweet, right? 
And for now I'm really satisfied with the functionality of these enclosures. They are really practical, really practical. With all of that being said, let me end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I have already Monday and Friday. So see you again soon. Bye!